اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سلام عليكم يا علي مدى Tonight, as we know, we will continue going on with our series regarding the status, the fazail, and the history of the 14 Masumin alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. In my last lecture, we discussed about Prophet Muhammad. So, in today's lecture, we will discuss about Bibi Fatima al-Zahra, salamullah alayha. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. I will give a brief introduction so that it is easy for our young children, our youth and Azadar to memorize and learn about Bibi Fatima. Bibi Fatima, also known as Bibi Fatima to Zahra, was the daughter of Prophet Muhammad and Bibi Khatija. Bibi Fatima, as we all know, was the wife of Imam Ali. Bibi Fatima is one of the people of the cloak. Let me tell you what is the people of the cloak. The people of the cloak, also known as Ashab al Kisa. They are those persons who were, who were given place by our Prophet under his cloak when the Ayatul Tatir verses were revealed to him. In the 12 verse Shia belief, Bibi Fatima is one of the 14 Masumin. She is one of the 14 infallibles. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Bibi Fatima was the mother of our second of our second and third Imam, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. She was also the mother of Bibi Zainab and Bibi Umm Kulsum. Salamullah alayha. Bibi Fatima, as I mentioned before, was the daughter of our Prophet, and her mother, Bibi Khatija, was the first wife of our Prophet. Historians have agreed that Bibi Fatima was born in Mecca inside the house of Bibi Khatija. According to Shia sources, her date of birth is recorded to be the 20th Jama'at the Sani, five years after Baisa. If you remember in my, last, in my last lecture, we talked a little bit about Baisa. Baisa is when our Prophet announced to the people that he was indeed the last messenger of Allah. Bibi Fatima received several marriage proposals from all around Arabia. However, she will choose to marry Imam Ali. According to some researchers, after our Prophet migrated to Medina and became the leader of the Islamic community, Bibi Fatima, being the only daughter of Rasulullah, was held in very high regards by the Muslims. In addition, because of her superior qualities over the other women of her era and the clear love our Prophet showed towards Bibi Fatima, this caused many Muslims to pursue her hand in marriages, but they were all denied. All proposals were rejected by the Prophet, and the Prophet said that Bibi Fatima's marriage authority was in the hand of Allah, and whoever Allah wishes to marry Bibi Fatima will be the one who will marry Bibi Fatima. It was only Imam Ali's proposal which was accepted by our Prophet by the commands of Allah and then Imam Ali married Bibi Fatima. Both Sunni and both Shia sources state that Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Bibi Zainab and Bibi Umm Kulsum are the four children of Bibi Fatima. In Shia sources and in some Sunni sources, a name of another son is mentioned who was miscarried as a result of the injury that Bibi Fatima sustained during the events that occurred after the demise of our prophets. His name is said to be Mohsid. But now, just give me a couple more minutes, I will talk more deeply about this event and how Bibi Fatima got injured because it is very important to understand and learn exactly how Bibi Fatima was injured. During the last few months of the life of Bibi Fatima, some very unpleasant and painful incidents occurred. It is mentioned that during this period of time, absolutely nobody saw Bibi Fatima smiling. Already the passing of her father, the events of Sakifa, the abduction of the Caliphate, the fact that her door was burned down, the confiscation of Fidak by Abu Bakr and the, delivering, and the delivery of the Fidak ceremony is just some of the important things that happened. 
But now I feel like it is very important for me to precise these events and I feel like I should start with Sakifa. Because Sakifa happened right after the passing of our prophets. Sakifa is a place it is very important to understand that when our prophet passed away and during his funeral, an election was held. An election was held. During this election, Abu Bakr was elected as the Caliph. Yet during the event of Khadir, our prophet raised Imam Ali and said, and said that whoever follows me follows Imam Ali. This is what our prophet said. This is the words of our prophet during the events of Khadir that whoever follows Imam Ali, whoever follows Rasulullah follows Imam Ali. These were the words of Rasulullah in the events of Khadir. Yet, even after that, the Muslims, right after the passing of Rasulullah, they held an election in which they decided to elect Imam Ali. Please recite aloud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Yet our prophet announced on the day of Ghadir, whoever I am his master, Ali is not your master. Whoever follows me, after me follow Imam Ali. But yet my Azadar, look at the Muslims. Right after Rasulullah passes away, they decide that they want to hold an election. They do not want to listen to the words of Rasulullah that were said during Ghadir and they elect Abu Bakr. But this, is just one of the few things that happen. Now let's talk about the confiscation of Fidak. Fidak, a beautiful garden, was gifted to Bibi Fatima by her father Rasulullah after the victory of Khaybar. By the command of Allah, our Prophet gifted Baghi Fidak, the garden of Fidak, the garden of Fidak, to his beloved daughter Bibi Fatima. But my Azadar, once again, after the passing of Rasulullah, it was confiscated. They took it away. Abu Bakr, he came and he confiscated Baghi Fidak. You can see that this, these events are right after the demise of Rasulullah. And this happened exactly right after the passing of Rasulullah. We have Sakifa, an election to choose the Khalifa when our Prophet clearly stated on the day of Khadir that the Caliph, the man to be followed after him was Imam Ali. But yet the Muslims, they hold an election in Sakifa. Then we have the confiscation of Fidak. Fidak, the garden of Fidak, was gifted by Rasulullah to Bibi Fatima when they had the victory of Khaybar. Yet right after the demise of Rasulullah, with no justice, with no reason, unjustly, the Baghi Fidak was... was um, the Baghi Fidak was confiscated from Bibi Fatima. My Azadar, we need to open our eyes and see the injustice for absolutely no reason. This is unacceptable. And that is when Bibi Fatima, she will deliver. She delivered the she delivered the Fidak ceremony. My Azadar, stay with me. That is when Bibi Fatima delivered the Fidak ceremony after Abu Bakr for no reason confiscated Baghi Fidak. She delivered this ceremony in front of many important companions of her father and some of the most important events during this period, as I just mentioned. Some of the most important events, we have the confiscation of Fidak. We have Ta, we have Sakifa. The fact that her door of her house was burned down and the confiscation, the abduction of the Khilafat. But my Azadar, it is very important to know on the day of Eid Hadi, our Rasulullah said, whoever I am, the master, Imam Ali is now who you will follow. Jis jis ka me mola, us us ka ali mola. These were the words of Rasulullah. Yet on Sakifa, they are holding an election. During the funeral of Rasulullah, we are having an election. They are electing Abu Bakr as the first Khalifa. And then after the passing of Rasulullah, they are confiscating Fidak for absolutely no reason. And then they come and they abduct caliphates. They had their own Khalifas. Yet, yet Rasulullah mentioned that it was Imam Ali who was to be followed. Not Abu Bakr. Please recite aloud salawat before we move on. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Bibi Fatima, she was always and she always stood beside Imam Ali. What I mean by that, she was always, she always took the side of Imam Ali. 
She was one of the main opponents of Saqifa and the choosing of Abu Bakr as a Khalifa. She was against Saqifa and she was against the fact that it was Abu Bakr who was chosen as the Khalifa. Because of this stance, Imam Ali and Bibi Fatima, they became massive targets of the government's threat, of which one major example, one famous example of not just the threat, of an action of the government, because Imam Ali refused to pay allegiance to Abu Bakr. It was the fact that they burned down the house of Fatima, they burned down the door of Fatima, they pushed through the door of Fatima, my Azadar. Remember, this is the same house which the angel of death requested permission to enter. Yet these companions, these people who call themselves companions, they burned the door of Fatima. They burst through the door of Fatima. They attacked the door of Fatima. They attacked the door. They attacked this door. They burned down the house because they were forcing Imam Ali and the companions who took refuge in the house of Fatima they were forcing them to come and take their oath to come and pay allegiance to Abu Bakr but to my Azadah it is very important that Fatima she did not let this happen Fatima stood on the door and said nobody will enter this house and take Ali that is when somebody that is when Abu Bakr he took with the command they took they burned down the door of Fatima they burned down the door of Fatima pushed this massive heavy door it stabbed Fatima on the ribs she it stabbed Fatima on the ribs and that is when Bibi Fatima had her miscarriage with Hazrat Mohsin my Azada it is very important to understand why the why exactly we are against this event because there was absolutely no reason for anyone to come down and burn her door Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. On her deathbed, Bibi Fatima requested her husband. She said, Imam Ali, I want you to listen to me. She says, nobody should come at my funeral who opposed me and oppressed me. I do not want him at my funeral. And then she said, oh Imam Ali, bury me at night. I want my funeral to be held at night. I want my funeral prayer and burial. Bury me at night. According to the most commonly accepted view, Bibi Fatima passed away on the third Jamaad al-Sani. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. My azadah, we have concluded our lecture. But it is not important to see that we have concluded this lecture. It is important that I hope each and every azadar understood the events of Saqifa. Each and every Azadar understood the confiscation of Fidak. Each and every Azadar understood the ceremony delivered by Bibi Fatima, their ceremony of Fidak. It is important to understand what happened when they burned down the door of Bibi Fatima, forcefully entered the house of Fatima. My Azadar, these are information, historical events, very important for our young youth, for not just our young youth, matter of fact, for everybody to understand so we can understand the majalises of our scholars. My Azadar, please remember me in your du'as and inshallah all Azadar are in my du'a. May Allah give us tawfiq to remain on the correct path of Yahlul Bayt alayhi salam and may Allah increase our ma'rifat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad.